Hi and welcome to Geometric Progressions Advanced. Just before we start, quick reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we're going to start with some um, geometric sequences and just being able to continue those sequences. So just a reminder that the key element of a geometric sequence is that from each term to the next you are multiplying by the same common ratio. So the, we have an R value. What have we multiplied to make uh, to turn one term into the next term? So what have I multiplied 4 by to get 1? Well, in order to do this, the quickest way to work out what the multiplier actually is, is to take the second term, in this case 1, and divide it by the previous term. So 1 divided by 4, well that is a quarter. And so we've multiplied by 1 quarter. Does that work for the next one? Well, 1 times 1 quarter, well 1 times anything would be the thing we've multiplied by. So if I times by a quarter again, I get a quarter. So it's worked. We found our R value, our R value being this common ratio of a quarter. And so we just need to repeat that. We need to multiply by a quarter again. So a quarter times a quarter, you multiply the top two numbers, one times one, and we multiply the bottom two numbers, four times four, it's going to be one sixteenth. Do that again, multiply by a quarter. Well, one times one would be one, and 16 times four, well, that would be doubled and doubled again, giving us 64, so one over 64. If we try it for the next one, we have two, two root two, and then four. So again, what we need to do if we're going to continue the sequence is work out what we must have multiplied by. And therefore, I'm going to take the two root two, and I'm going to divide it by the previous term. So two root two divided by two, well, that would just mean that we've cancelled out the twos. We must have multiplied by root two. And so in this case, R, our common uh, common ratio, is root two. So I've multiplied by root two. Does that work for the next one? If I multiply by root two, well, that is two root two times root two. Now, the laws of thirds suggest that if you multiply a third by itself, you just get the number underneath the third. So that would be two times two. And two times two is four, which is what we've actually got here. So that is correct. So from now on, we must just be multiplying by root two. And so um, four times root two, well, all we need to do there is write that as four root two, because when we multiply by root two, we just end up uh, with um, four root two. And then if I multiply again by root two, well, in this case, this will be four times root two times root two. And if I do that, the root two times the root two is two. So I've got four times two and four times two is eight. And so the final term in that sequence would be eight. So next we've been asked to find R, the common ratio, but in this case, we don't have consecutive terms. What we have uh, to begin with, we have two terms which are separated by a missing term. And so what that means is the process of multiplication has happened once and then twice. It's happened um, a, a repeated number of times. So the first thing I want to do is find out what the difference was um, in terms of multiplication between the third term and the first term. And so just like we did before, I'm going to divide 12 by three. And therefore the multiplication from the first to the third term is a multiplication of four. And we will see that that is also the case between the third term and the fifth term. So how do we work out what the individual changes were? Well, we do this by taking a square root. And the reason we do that is because this is uh, the same number multiplied by itself and by itself again in order to make four. And so I'm going to take the square root of four, and that is two. And so I could do that as a multiplication of two and then another multiplication of two. And so my missing, so R value must be two, the common ratio, but then the missing terms, well, three times two is six. If I times that by two, I get 12. If I times that by 2, I get 24. And if I times that by 2, I get 48. And so if you have non-consecutive terms and you try to find what's in the middle, then you need to take the square root of the uh, multiplication between 
the non-consecutive values. So let's try that again here. Find R the common ratio. So again, first of all, we want to know what the uh, how many we've multiplied to get from the first term to the third term. Well, to get from 3 to 9, that is multiplying by 3. And so the question then is, well, how do I get to the next term in the sequence? And to do that, I'm going to have to take the square root of 3 because in order to make the jump of 3 across 2 different terms, it's going to be root 3 times root 3, and root 3 times root 3 is 3. And therefore, my missing term will be 3 root 3. And in the next set, we're still going to do the same again. That's going to have to multiply by root 3, so 9 root 3. And just to check, if I did 3 root 3 and I multiplied it by root 3, well, what should I get? Well, root 3 times root 3 is 3, so that's 3 times 3, which is 9, which is what we had here. And in the second part, if I had 9 root 3 and I multiplied that by root 3 in order to find the final value, well, the root 3 times the root 3, that is just 3. And so 9 times 3 is 27. It's what we expected at the end. And so lastly, we're going to look at situations where we need to find R, the common ratio, and some missing terms within a sequence, um, where the, uh, the actual um, common ratio is a little bit more complicated than we've seen previously. So in this case, we do have a pair of consecutive terms. So we have 2 over Y followed by 4. And so in order to work out what that common ratio is, I need to do the same as I did before. I need to take 4 and divide it by the previous term. So 4 divided by 2 over y. Now, with this one, if we remember our methods for dividing by fractions, we should copy, change, and flip. And so what we've got is 4 times y over 2, and that basically is 4y over 2. And if we simplify that, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we've just got 2y, and therefore we have multiplied by 2y. And so to continue the sequence, we need to do that again. So we would need to multiply by 2y in the next one. So 4 times 2y, well, 4 times 2 is 8, and that would be 8y. And let's just check that it definitely works for the whole sequence. So if I multiply by 2y again, 8 times 2 is 16, y times y is y squared. It is exactly right. Now, the last one is probably the most uh, most tricky that we are going to see in this situation. We're trying to find the common ratio again and then continue the sequence on. Now, in this case, the really important thing is that you can recognise this connection between root 3 takeaway 1 and 2. Now, if you have a look carefully, you might notice that 3 takeaway 1 is 2. And that is useful because what we're actually dealing with here is a difference of two squares. What I've got is root 3 take away 1. What would I multiply that by in order to make 2? Well, the key here is that if I multiply by root 3 and plus 1 instead, my difference of 2 squares here, well, that would be 3 root 3 times root 3 is 3 and negative 1 times positive 1 take away 1. And the reason I know I don't need anything else in the middle is this is the difference of two squares uh, situation. And so 3 take away 1 equals 2. And so my common ratio must be the bracket which I have multiplied by, which was 3x plus 1. And therefore, what we are going to have to do here is multiply again by root 3 plus 1. And so we could just write that as two brackets, root 3 plus 1. Because when we multiply again, we're going to multiply by root 3 plus 1 again. And so if I do that, I will have 2 brackets, root 3 plus 1, root 3 plus 1. And so now if I expand those brackets, I'll have root 3 times uh, root 3. So that's 2 times uh, root 3 times root 3, which is 3. Root 3 plus 1 times plus 1, so that's plus root 3 plus 1 times root 3, which is another, plus root 3, and plus 1 times plus 1, 
and there we go and so let's just keep simplifying that well that gives me two lots of three plus one is four and root three plus root three well, that's two root three and so if I simplify one last time I'm now going to multiply everything by two and so what I get is eight plus four root three and so the last one here will be eight um, eight plus four root three and so we're going to end with the exam question and this came from the edXL paper in November 2017 and it was higher paper 2 and we are told that s is a geometric sequence given that root x take away 1 1 and root x plus 1 are the first three terms of s find the value of x you must show all your working now if we are thinking about the sequence here, the important factor in order to work out what x actually is would be to know what the common ratio is. And therefore, the common ratio between root, uh, root x take away 1 and 1, well, that would be 1 over root x take away 1. That would be the common ratio. But what we also know is it must be the same as the common ratio between the next two terms. So root x plus 1 over 1. These two things must both be equal because the common it is a common ratio, it is the same multiple each time. And so all we then need to do is solve this problem. So what it's telling me is that 1 over the square root of x take away 1 equals root x plus 1 because it's being divided by 1 so we can just cancel that out. And then in order to solve this, well, I'm going to multiply by the expression on the bottom of the fraction. So 1 equals root x plus 1 brackets root x take away 1. And what we see here again, we have this difference of two squares. We have a root x times a root x. Well, root x times root x is x. And we have a plus 1 times a negative 1. And so we'll have negative 1. In terms of the other elements, we would have had plus x, um, and we would have had um, subtract x. They would cancel each other out. And therefore, 1 equals x take away 1. And therefore, what is x? Well, all we have to do here is now add that 1 on, and so 2 equals x. We now know that the value is 2. And so using this, it says show that the fifth term of s is 7 plus 5 root 2. Well, currently, we know um, what, the, uh, what the common ratio is. So we already know here, if we have a look, we have root 2 take away 1 is our first term. The next term is 1. And the third term is root 2 plus 1. If I continue... We already know what the common uh, what the common ratio is. The common ratio is actually root x plus one, or as we could call it, now that we know that x is two, it's root two plus one. And so I need to multiply root two plus one by root two plus one. So let's do that first. And so root two plus one times root two plus one. Well, root 2 times root 2 is 2. We're going to add root 2. We're going to add root 2. And we're going to add 1. And so this simplifies to 3 plus 2 root 2. And so that will be the next term in the sequence, 3 plus 2 root 2. But we need to continue this one more time in order to get the fifth term. So root 2 plus 1 is going to be multiplied again and so this time we're going to have 3 plus 2 root 2 multiplied by root 2 plus 1 and so if we work this one out we have 3 times root 2 which is 3 root 2 we have 3 times 1 which is plus 3 we have 2 root 2 times root 2 so the root 2 times root 2 is 2 so that is actually just adding 4 and then we need to add 2 root 2. And so if we simplify this, well, the 3 plus the 4 gives me 7. 
and the 3 root 2 plus the 2 root 2 is plus 5 root 2 and if we take a look at the question that is exactly what we were told to show.